Good day everyone. Day 14, animal tracking transmitter or a fox hunt beacon. This is a, a really simple circuit that one, well, at least in the past, might have used to track animals for scientific research. It can be built extremely small if you use surface mount devices, but I physically built this one fairly large just to make it easy, but it's still not crazy small. You could fit it in a film canister along with the battery, which would last a very long time because it doesn't consume very much current. Um, sort of sort of for a medium to large animal it would be fine. If you wanted it for a small animal you definitely want to build it in a surface mount uh, form and it could be you know like thumbnail size or even smaller. But uh, it's extremely simple. It, it's currently running off 1.5 volts. It oscillates at 1 volt just fine and even lower than that down to about 600 millivolts maybe. Um, I use an MPSH10 RF transistor, but it works with other transistors, including a humble 2N3904. Depends on the exact frequency that you're operating it at. Um, I have a 52.6417 megahertz crystal, which just I happen to have, and it's in a handband that I'm allowed to transmit on. If you're not, <laughs> you might want to use a 27145 crystal, or um, you know, use it in overtone mode. Uh, so you can, you can. I mean, this is actually an, probably an overtone crystal anyway. But um, the, but I didn't sweep the crystal. I wouldn't surprise me if it's an overtone crystal because it's hard to make really high frequency crystals. They get pretty thin because uh, you know they they use a volume bulk wave um, to determine the frequency. But uh, this tank circuit here, which is tuned via this capacitor and this capacitor, which is variable. And this inductor, you can adjust those for different operating frequencies and overtones of the crystal that you're using. Basically, I mean, if you look at this, it's a pierce oscillator, right? Like it's a crystal pierce oscillator, and you've got the overtone selector or resonator on the in the collector circuit. Um, the coupling capacitor here, just to stiffen the rails so at RF, and this is also a squigging circuit, much like day 13s. You know, it has some similarity, in fact, to day 13s in the sense that uh, if you ignore this inductor and you, that was a resistor, then it would be much the same kind of circuit. You've got a very um, large capacitor and a fairly high impedance that is charging that capacitor and then, you know, an RF oscillator. So much the same here. We have a 1K5 resistor, which is what actually uh, limits the, the bias current into the base of this thing and in some sense also helps set the duration of the transmission pulse. But, yeah, fairly high resistor here this capacitor charges up until this guy turns on. I mean, it's always a little bit on, but turn, it turns on enough that you have enough transimpedance, the tra transconductance, that the thing will oscillate. Um, it's a conventional pierce oscillator in that mode, or an overtone oscillator, depending on, on how you select these um, components. This capacitor here is just a small coupling capacitor to try and match the impedance of the antenna to this point. Um, if the crystal and the resonator are not really on in close harmonic relationships or on the same frequency with each other, it's possible that it will oscillate without um, control of the crystal, like it'll just take off whatever the LC resonator um, operates at. This could be a feature for you if you don't want to actually use a crystal locked version, although you'd probably be better off changing the topology a little bit, putting a resistor in the emitter and using emitter um, collector feedback. But the, uh, the crystal oscillator is certainly great for stability. Alrighty, uh, let's actually listen to it. So I've got a little DSP radio over here. Turn the volume up. The encoder's on this thing. I shot actually because it's cheap crap. So as you can hear, the transmission is actually chirped. So it chirps as it starts up. It starts at a lower frequency and rises as the bias increases. But the uh, interval is, is really controlled by, you know, this resistor, how fast this guy gets to the point where it turns on. And the time is, is controlled by this and also how long the oscillator oscillates and how strongly it oscillates because the non-linearity -linear of this device and the base current is really what's determining the discharge rate and when it will stop oscillating. Um, ooh, I knocked that a little off frequency. Here we go. What we can do uh, to make it operate a little bit faster is I've just got, you know, the ye old resistor substitution wheel here, and I can put another resistor in series with this guy to reduce it. Actually, I've written 100k here, but I used, at the moment, what you're listening to is 470k. 
um, but you can obviously reduce that. And it will, you know, transmit more frequently. That will obviously use more power. You can make this much larger, like it can be megs, and it will still work fine. Um, if I kind of damp the oscillations a little bit with my fingers, you can see I pull it. And the amount of time that it takes to complete transmission increases. But uh, one thing you might want to do if you actually wanted to use this as a telemetry transmitter is you can, say, make this device variable. It could be a thermistor. It could be uh, LDR. Um, and that would then set the repetition rate of the circuit. And you could use the repetition rate of the circuit to transmit some kind of information about you know, temperature or ambient light. Uh, you could put this maybe in a greenhouse or like out in the backyard or something in a little container because the battery current, I mean, it's so low, it's very sub one milliamp, except when it actually starts transmitting, then it's a few milliamps. So even a very small battery will last a long time. Antenna wise, I mean, a quarter wave is good. The inductor and com like the actual resonant circuit could be the antenna, like you could have a loop antenna and at VHF frequencies, that's actually a very possible implementation. I've seen animal tracking transmitters that actually have the collar part of the transmitter is essentially this tank circuit um, obviously the body of the animal being in there pulls it a little bit but the crystal is what's defining the resonant frequency and that is a, a fairly economical use of like having to have a some way to attach it to the animal and as well as having a larger antenna a trailing wire is also fine depending on our application uh, this is the only receiver that I, I have actually that I could find in a pinch that can detect the uh, the emission of this. It's in upper sideband mode at the moment. Um, but what we might do is actually build a an antenna and receiver specifically for this. So a really a, a simple project might be a direct conversion receiver for this frequency and maybe an adcock or some kind of other semi-directional antenna or maybe some loops with a, a little um, phased element that, uh, that gives it a cardioid response but to build an actual practical direction finding device for this. So this could totally be used as a, um, a fox hunt beacon for um, amateur radio you know, field day work. It's uh, quite reliable and it will operate at much higher voltages as well. Like you just have to maybe play around with these um, resistances to get it you know, where you want it. You can reduce the transmit power, you can increase the transmit power. It's very flexible but it's kind of like your minimum component um, you know tracking transmitter and very amenable to making in surface mount devices this could be a saw resonator even and you could use a hotter transistor and although the MPSH 10 would probably work in low UHF as well which would reduce your antenna requirements yeah lots of room for experimentation this 330 nano is uh, 8 turns 0.9 millimeter um, wire on an 8 millimeter former as you can see there, nothing special about it. I just wound it, you know, to be about, you know, 100, 150 um, ohms of reactance at the frequency in question, and I had suitable matching capacitors. But that's not particularly critical, just recompute it for whatever your operating frequency is. Alrighty. Thought maybe a radio project would be uh, good for today. It's probably extremely annoying listening to that beep away, but uh, you can tune the frequency a little bit. Like the, the, the resonator will pull the crystal a little bit, so you could potentially have more than one of these. And I think in practice, when they used to use these for tracking animals, each animal would have a slightly different frequency. And they'd identify the animal, at least at a distance, by using that. Obviously, have tags when they you know, physically got access to the animal. But um, I think most of the ones that they use for animal tracking operate around 150 megahertz, but uh, you know, 6 meters is not a terrible frequency for this either. Alrighty, see you tomorrow. Bye.